Before we start, a quick warning. You might get a holiday envy. Hey guys, this is my third Hohem mobile gimbal. Previously, I got the i7X, which dethroned my DJI Osmo mobile. Then I got the upgraded version, i7X2, which you can see here, the size difference is staggering. And now we are talking about iSteady M6, a thing of beauty that actually made my trip to Morocco and Marrakesh really something else. And before we start a full disclosure, they have sent me the gimbal, but they did not sponsor my trip to Morocco. That, that, that's the disappointing bit. When I decided to take Hohem iSteady M6 with me to Marrakesh, well, I was taking a gamble, mostly because the device has arrived a day before my departure, and I didn't know its capability or whether it's gonna do a good job. And I really wanted to have some nice memories from it because I haven't been anywhere since pre-pandemic times, and that's a long time. Plus, the weather in UK is terrible, everything is grey and damp, and that doesn't really scream look at this footage, right? So yeah, I took it with me to Marrakesh. I was traveling light, so I needed to make extra space for this uh, massive gimbal that doesn't really fall that well, like the previous installments, but I was okay because I was taking my Xiaomi Mi 11 with me as my camera, and uh, I would rely on that. So I only had one evening before my departure to get myself familiar with all the button layouts and how the gimbal works. M6 is loaded with different knobs, buttons and switches and it will take you a while to actually get yourself familiar, especially that a lot of these buttons have different functions depending on how many times you press them. The disadvantage of that is obviously that you'll have to go through user manual and get yourself familiar and memorize all the controls, but the advantage of that is that you no longer tied into any specific app. I mean, the gimbal still comes with a Hohem app, but I didn't even use it on my trip to Marrakesh at all. The first thing that stands out to me is actually that big rotary encoder. That's nice knobby knob. And this encoder actually performs several functions. It has a 360 degree rotation, so you can rotate this continuously, and you can press it multiple times to select different modes. It will allow you to activate the light, more of that in a second, change the color of that RGB light, and also switch over to different modes, one controlling roll and one controlling the focus pull. Now that focus pull is only available via app, which is a slight disappointment, but to my knowledge, I don't think this is even possible using standard Android. Next to that knob are A and B buttons responsible for time lapses. That's right, you can set a position A, position B, and then transition from A to B, within a specific time without even using an app. The front interface has something new as well. This time we have a small OLED display, it's a 0.96 inch display, which will display the current function of the gimbal, it gives you status like battery, etc. Now below that there is a 4 degree joystick to manipulate your gimbal, there is a mode button which allows you to select, well, different modes, and obviously you have a record button with a zoom, kind of like a slide. I don't want to call it a slider, it's, it's, it's a thingy. Now, nice discovery, which I made uh, quite a bit later, is that if you press multiple times on your record button, you'll actually enable the camera or power on the camera on a locked phone and allow you to start shooting. And you can also use it to change the video to photo and reverse the camera too. And for using that zoom slider when not recording, I was able to actually change the lenses type on my Xiaomi Mi 11, which is plus because it reduced the number of times I had to interact with a phone directly. On the opposite side, we have trigger, and that trigger is quite useful for several things as well. If you tap and hold it, it will enable sport mode, a more aggressive kind of following that you can achieve with that gimbal. But tap it two times and it will uh, readjust the position three times to uh, swap the camera and send the camera facing your face. But my favorite one is actually for button tap, which allows you to reorient the gimbal in such a way that it doesn't get in a way of shooting with a wide screen. Something that I did quite a bit during my stay in Marrakesh. The problem with that was that I didn't really know what I'm doing, so I only discovered that later on in the trip, and a lot of the time when I was shooting something, it was kind of just uh, me trying things out and finding out new features by accident. Right, on the side we have a power button, which now if you 
tap it twice, it enables a sleep mode, but be careful with that because I actually managed to put the device in a sleep mode, forget about it, put it in a backpack and wake up with drained battery. Next up we have a USB Type-C port and this is not the only port. You'll also find a extra port on the gimbal itself which will allow you to pass the charge from the gimbal to the phone. I mean the battery internally, it's not big. It's 2600 milliamps. However, it's long enough to keep this device operational for several hours a day. I only had to charge it once in a week and mostly because I discharge it during the sleep time. But it's nice to have this option if you're running low on battery and you just want to top up your phone. After all, you probably want to have a spare charge on your phone than a gimbal just to take that last picture, right? A closer look at the gimbal reveals a couple of other features like rotatable head grip so you can grab your phone in different locations and there are various attachment points that you can use. They utilize quarter inch screw adapters, so your tripod adapters, to add accessories. Which brings us to the most uh, important point. This can handle up to 400 grams. And I know what you're thinking, wait, none of the phones weigh 400 grams, why do I need this much? Well, typically you don't but having the ability to add more equipment to the gimbal or add that extra torque can be mm, useful. And don't get me wrong, I do not condone traveling on a bicycle at 60 km per hour while trying to shoot the footage. That's plain dangerous and it should be left to professionals like me. But I actually had to go and stick their hand through the window of the car trying to capture some footage while traveling in a car at 60 km per hour. So that's about 40 miles if you're doing those units. And uh, it was surprisingly steady. That also means that you can use dedicated two points on the gimbal itself to attach stuff like microphones, extra lights and whatever you desire without causing gimbal to tip over. But one of the most important features is this little gizmo. This is AI mode with built-in LED light. It's a RGB LED because RGB LEDs are everything. But it's not the light that I'm excited about, it's the AI module which snapped magnetically to the gimbal allows your gimbal to track your face in both directions. Why is it such a big deal? Well, because previously you were limited to how you could utilize the face tracking. Face tracking was enabled through the app and you would have to use the Hohem app in order to achieve this, which then subsequently would limit you to what camera and camera modes you could use to pull it off. I guess it was taxing on the processor and it was suppressing more um, fancy modes like uh, 4K at 60 frames per second or, in case of my phone, 8K. With that restriction gone, you can simply put your phone in, use the any camera app you desire or social media app for streaming and you'll still get a decent face tracking. On top of that, you don't really have to use the phone at all. You can get yourself an action camera, stick it in, providing it's gonna fit into a JAWS and use it in exactly the same way while enjoying the AI tracking. So with that and 400 grams of extra payload, you can actually experiment. And as it happened, Apexel has sent me a set of lenses that I can add to camera uh, and try it out. That would add extra weight to the gimbal, but also provide me with a new perspective. Those lenses can change how your main lens on the camera behaves. And that way you can change the property of the lens itself without sacrificing often a resolution or frame rate uh, on other lenses on your camera which might be worse. I gotta say, despite having a bit of heft to it, Gimbal handled that without any problems. I can run around, walk and just keep the phone steady without any problems. And the results, well, they're gonna depend on what kind of camera you have. And while they definitely can change the way your uh, final image video picture looks like, you'll definitely have to be careful about the way you position them because they have to be placed ideally in the center of the camera lens that you're going to use to record that pictures or videos through. And uh, one of the interesting bit is that you could see the image stabilization on my camera and how much of a crop it is. When I take a picture, my crop is much smaller. The 5-in-1 set came with uh, 170, 195 and 110 wide lens lenses and 2 times telephoto which I tested with a gimbal to see how much difference I would get between this and my standard lens. In the set there was also included a 10 times macro lens which uh, probably isn't the best for the gimbal use. And they also supplied me with a lens that is capable of 200 times magnification and I provided some pretty interesting results too. 
But anyway, if you want to check it out, check the description of this video. I actually plan to take them with me to Morocco, but unfortunately they arrived late. So, let's go to Morocco. Within two days of my stay in Marrakesh, I was able to develop the muscle memory and uh, start to use all the features of the gimbal that I know of proficiently. There were other features I wasn't aware of it, and to be honest, all the hiccups that I had were mostly at the user's fault, not knowing what he's doing with the gimbal. I also discovered a couple of annoyances. By no means they are deal-breaking or anything, but they are worth mentioning. First, let's start with that small AI module. There is no way sensible to store that AI unit that goes on top of the gimbal. It's too small to be clamped within the phone jaws and the magnets aren't really strong enough to keep it uh, attached to the gimbal inside your bag, so very often I would find myself just uh, going through the bag and trying to locate it. I also dropped it on the floor several times while trying to mount my phone into the jaws. It can be finicky and I would advise you to add that add-on as the last thing and remove it as the first thing before you actually power down your gimbal. And while we're speaking about it, let's talk about tracking. While we're tracking a single person, everything is really excellent. It's very responsive to gestures that allow you to start the truck, stop the truck, or reframe the truck, which are useful, but none of the gestures actually include to start shooting or stop shooting, which would be very handy. For that, you'll have to use the app. But where the AI tracking comes short is tracking multiple people. In a crowded area, so just simply walking as a pair, AI tracker will get confused and switch over from one face to another. As there is no interface to select a particular face and keep tracking that, well, there's not much you can do about it. But if you're going to track a single person, the experience is pretty good. The AI tracking isn't the only feature of that tiny gadget. It has a LED light, which you can use to actually illuminate subjects as long as they are quite close to you. You can either select the color temperature or switch to full RGB mode and start blasting and illuminating your targets. It's simple to use and the big wheel allows you to control the brightness, intensity of your color, etc. While you can't fold the M6, there is a small lock in here that you can engage to prevent it from rotating in your bag. There is also a tiny notch that's supposed to keep another axis in the same position and prevent it from just wiggling around, but after a week of use that notch kind of got shaped enough and no longer works. That's the only quality issue that I discovered on M6 and I would like them to improve it. Lastly, I do think that the controls of the gimbal are slightly underutilized, especially that the gimbal comes with a display. While on holidays, I've made a mission not to use the Helheim app. It's not like I dislike it or anything, I just wanted to prove the point that you can do this with this gimbal. And yes, for the most part you can. There are only several things that you can change in the app. And uh, well, let's go over it. First thing would be the gestures that you can use to start or stop recording, which basically could be very, very handy if you operate the gimbal remotely. I mean, even if you're not shooting your videos and taking a selfie, extending that hand and trying to reach the button can be problematic. I ended up using a timer for that. There are two new modes in a moment section. Those are the sections that are responsible for funky effects that you can use the gimbal with. Uh, one is Clone Me, which allows you to take a picture of yourself in multiple places at once using a panoramic shot. And the second one is the Smart Dolly Zoom, which allows you to, well, create a dolly zoom much smarter, where the gimbal is actively tracking the subject to determine the distance and the focus it should use. But while playing with the app, I also discovered that the AI tracking of objects, because that's what you can do while using the app, got much better, and now you've got better chances of recovering lost subjects, which is awesome because last time I was playing with a different Hohem app, 
well, it was like 50-50. But considering how much functionality I get from the gimbal alone, I don't see myself using that app very often. I'm probably going to just use it to check if there is any firmware and they've added the menus to the LCD OLED display uh, or something else. I gotta say, there is no denying that uh, without that gimbal, my Moroccan videos wouldn't be as awesome. I had a great time in there and I would strongly recommend you go and visit. And if you do, make sure you have a phone gimbal, even if it's just a normal, small, iSteady X2 gimbal that you can get for probably half price. This isn't the cheapest way to stabilize your mobile phone, but it's definitely one of the most robust and now one of my favorite ways to stabilize mobile footage. If you are interested, you can get it for $209 with perhaps a small discount in the description of this video. So do check it out and I would like to thank Hohem for sending me this gimbal for the review and also a big shout out to Apexel Lenses for letting me play with the lenses on the phone. So guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to see what's in my next video, you know how YouTube works, I don't think I have to explain that. You are not old enough, right? But I have a couple of social media links down below, so consider following me there if you want to start a conversation with me and find out what I'm working on next. Thanks so much for watching and see you later. Take care. Bye.